Okay, today we are looking at the uh, fundamental fundamental quantities, fundamental quantities. Okay, that's what we are looking at. Then we're also going to look at the derived quantities. So the first thing you need to know is the definition. You also need to know examples of both fundamental quantities and the derived quantities. You also need to know their units. You also need to know the instruments that are used to measure them. So once you get to know this, then you are warm and dry. Definition, examples, units, instruments. Let's get to the, the point. So, um, fundamental quantities are physical quantities. These are physical These are physical quantities. These are physical quantities which cannot be stated in any other physical quantity. Okay. What we mean is that these are standalone quantities. You only need the fundamental quantities to have a fundamental quantities. We understand as we go on. So their primary purpose, their primary purpose, their primary, their primary purpose is to support other physical quantities physical quantities that are derived from them okay what do we mean by this there are quantities that are derived from fundamental quantities and these quantities are not fundamental quantities. So examples of fundamental quantities. Examples, we have got time, time, length, mass, current, electric current, and so forth. So this is the definition. These are quantities which cannot be stated in any other physical quantity. Uh, these are quantities that cannot be stated in any other physical quantities. These should be quantities because we started with a problem. Their primary purpose is to support other physical quantities that are derived from them. Examples of fundamental quantities we have for time, length, mass, and current. Okay, let's look at the table properly. Let's look at the table of fundamental quantities so that we can properly understand the units. Okay, so this side of the table, we have quantity, the quantity itself. Then we have got the unit. Then we have got the symbol. Okay, so the first example that we gave was the time. The unit is a second, time is measured in a second, and the symbol is S. You can use the stopwatch. We have got mass, the unit is a kilogram, and you can use the beam balance. The next one that we have is the length, and it is measured, the unit is meters, which is summarized by M. You can use the measuring tape. We have got electric current, electric current, which is measured in amperes, and you can use an ammeter. You have got temperature, 
temperature this is thermodynamic temperature which is measured in kelvins get a note of that kelvins then we have got the amount of substance amount of substance i hope we are able to see this which is measured in moles and the symbol is simply that the last one which we have is let me let me let me rub this one so that we can get it right to on top here the last one so we have got time mass length electrical temperature amount of the substance then we have luminous intensity luminous intensity okay luminous intensity which is measured in candela and the symbol is a cd okay so this is the, the amount of light that for example a bulb discharges that's what we call luminous intensity so these are some of the fundamental quantities we have and these are the fundamental units or the basic units or the base units and these are the symbols so you need to be able to define what fundamental quantities are you should be able to define the fundamental units you should be able to give the symbols and the, the instruments that are used to measure each of these okay let's look at the derived quantities now the derived quantities now derived quantities are quantities that are formed by the combination of two or more fundamental quantities okay so derived derived quantities we are saying these are quantities quantities that are formed by the combination of two or more two or more fundamental quantities okay so for you to have a derived quantity you need one two three four and so only of the fundamental quantities for example if we have got area for you to have area you need to combine length and length okay and that combination is by multiplication that's why area is equal to l i mean area is equal to m squared which is the unit it shows you that you are multiplying the length by length volume is cubic meter it means you are multiplying length times three length times length times length another example that we can get is speed for you to have speed we say speed is equal to distance over time you need distance which is length you also need time for you to have speed and the unit is meters per second so you can see that the derived quantities we need more than me one of the fundamental quantities to have them so let's look at the table of fundamental i mean of derived quantities and their units okay so on the top corner here we have got the quantity which is the derived quantity then you have got the unit and the symbol now notice that every quantity every derived quantity that we are going to have it will be a combination of the fundamental quantities which we looked at earlier even the units will be a combination of the base units which we looked at earlier we looked at area okay so that is it so number one what do we have area we looked at this area is square meter which is telling you that it is the length times the length okay square meter so we'll write here square square meter okay volume number two cubic cubic meter that is telling you that it's l times l times l which is that so this is the symbol 
we looked at also speed okay meters per second okay so you need the distance which is length and the second which is the time so it is meters per second number four acceleration acceleration is also a combination it's not a standard only quantity so you need c meters per second squared so it is meters per second squared you see you need one length and two time number five you can talk about the density density is mass over volume so it is a kilogram kilogram per cubic meter where you have got mass and the combination of length you see you can talk about the force you can talk about the pressure 67 you can talk about the pressure all these are formed by combining one or two of the fundamental quantities so that you can arrive at the derived quantities so this is the whole topic remember you need to, to be able to define them you need to be able to state their units you need to be able to write their symbols you need to be able to state the instruments used to measure them, especially for fundamental quantities.